uh, going live into Facebook for some reason. My webcam, I think I mentioned yesterday, uh, my webcam will not actually for some reason allow me to go into Facebook live. Uh, so what I'm having to do is go through um, through my uh, through Zoom. So when I'm in Zoom, that means I can't actually see if anybody is live in Facebook. So I apologize. Um, I might be kind of flipping back and forth between the two to see if anybody is actually live. Uh, but if I don't say hi, it's not that I'm being a snob. It's just that I am um, trying to figure out this whole live thing and try to figure out how I go um, through Zoom at the same time as being live on Facebook. So uh, let's just get started here. So um, as I say, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to today's live. And as promised, I am going to be helping over the next few days to change, hopefully change your relationship with food. Uh, so in my experience, uh, developing a better relationship with your body in general uh, and what you put into it starts with breaking uh, what I've talked about over the last couple of days in the videos that I've posted is breaking the trance that is the root cause of any number of self-destructive habits. So try this. Just before, uh, before we get started, what I'd like you to do is, um, I'd like you to take a moment and just make a note of what you ate yesterday, when you ate it, and what you were doing while you were eating. So the what, the when, and the while. Okay, and I'll explain in a minute why this is important. Okay, I'll just give you a second here uh, to make a note of that. And as I say, as I mentioned before, I'm on Zoom going live into Facebook. So if anybody is live, hi, um, I can't actually see you because I'm going through Zoom. So I apologize for, uh, for not actually uh, acknowledging that you're here, but thank you for being here. Um, okay. So if you've taken the time to uh, very quickly write down what you ate yesterday, when you ate it, and what you were doing while you were eating. Okay, so I'd like to ask, does anything stand out for you um, from what you've written down? I'm going to hazard a guess that, uh, first of all, you had a really hard time trying to remember what you ate and when you ate it. And secondly, I'm going to bet that probably most people in most inst instances, um, you've noted uh, the food that you've noted down involved doing something else as you're eating. So why is that significant? Well, the first rule when it comes to getting a handle on any habitual activity, including food and drink consumption, is identifying what the habit is and the circumstances that lead to you engaging in it. So once you've done that, you can become much more mindful of your behavior. So in other words, you can understand what you do and the things that might be triggering you to do them. So over the years in my hypnotherapy practice, I've had so many clients uh, visit me for help with all sorts of issues and food and struggling to release weight has been consistently top of the list. And I think this is because um, being bigger than, um, than you're comfortable being has such a major impact on people's lives. Um, from your self-confidence, your self-image, right through to, uh, to people's health and the ability to enjoy the things in life that bring joy. And without exception, such problems do not actually lie in food at all. 
So they tend to stem from an unhelpful mindset and the accompanying rituals, which lead to people eating the wrong things, or maybe you're eating too much of the right things, or not exercising enough. Um, and with insufficient awareness of the damage that is being done to our bodies. Um, most clients have tried two or three traditional diets and have seen their weight yo-yo up and down, back and forward for years as a consequence, but have never actually achieved lasting success. Um, and I found myself asking, so you've done these diets, so why are you, what, why, are, why are these, these clients still overweight? And I realized that if the many fad diets out there actually worked, um, people without a doubt uh, would be the shape that they wanted to be, the shape and size that they wanted to be. Yet most people um, have repeatedly experimented with the latest craze, um, releasing the weight, dropping the pounds, only to put them back on again. So the question is, what's going wrong? So I wanna just talk a little bit about um, our bodies. Um, so when we're born, we um, have this inbuilt survival mechanism. And it's as simple as can be. Our stomach, when we're hungry, sends a signal to the brain that we need food. And as a baby, we cry, we get fed, and once we're satisfied, we just stop eating. We're programmed from the very get-go to only take in what the body actually needs. And the body knows best what it needs to thrive and survive. So unfortunately, what happens is as we get older, our brain gets more involved and we start becoming conditioned by our environment, uh, developing associations with food, whether they're good or bad associations. So, for example, one thing that often happens is um, if parents give um, candies or treats as a reward uh, to make us feel better as a child, that creates a link in our brain between sugar and comfort. And how many of us, myself included, were told as a child to clear your plate? If you don't eat your meat, how can you get any pudding, right? Just like that song. Um, but that's what we were told as children, clear your plate. If you don't eat what's on your plate, you can't have dessert. Um, so that kind of creates these new pathways that tell us to ignore what our body is telling us and to listen to what we're being told. So that's just um, you know one example of how natural instinct about um, when we've had enough and to stop eating gets clouded by conditioning. So similarly, uh, being deprived as a child for whatever reason can lead to binge eating tendencies later in life once those restrictions are taken away. Um, I actually had uh, a client who told me that as a child, she was not allowed to eat anything sweet, right? She wasn't allowed any chocolate, any cake, any cookies. And as soon as she was able to afford to go out and buy stuff for herself, she went crazy. She just binged on all the chocolate, all the cookies, all the cakes, and that then formed that new habit for her because um, she had been deprived as a child. And now all of a sudden she could afford to buy these things herself. And she just, uh, she just, created that habit. So in my experience, um, there are several reasons why diets just don't work. Uh, but the fundamental one is these uh, kinds of connections that I've just talked about. Because diets only address the physical results of our overindulgence, and they don't actually change how we think, and they don't address the real problem that's going on. So wonder diets, crash plans, there's a plethora of number counting um, diets out there, color combinations, um, you know, protein only, fat only, sugar-free, fasting. And 
most of my clients have tried some form or other of these fad diets and they've always been dissatisfied with the results. Well, actually I shouldn't say they've always been dissatisfied. They usually start out being completely satisfied with the results, but gradually as time goes by, they've stopped the diet and now they've started to put the weight back on and now they've become dissatisfied with the, the diet that they've been on. Um, so most of the meal plans and regimes and lifestyle options, um, call them whatever you will, uh, that I've come across actually increase our obsession with food. And it's, let's face it, it it's, it's easy to cheat the system, right? So if you go for weekly weigh-ins, for example, um, how many people have actually cheated the system by not eating or drinking anything for hours before going for the weigh-in just so that they can dupe the scales, right? Um, so then there's the fact that, as I said, diets are, are focused on weight in the first place um, when there's actually a range of factors that are important, such as the overall body shape and size, your muscle tone, there's a lot more to it than the actual number on the scale. So I think the fundamental issue is that we've lost sight of the basic principles on which the human species relies, and that is eating only what we need. You can eat all kinds of different foods as long as you take them in moderation and include daily exercise. Um, so the trick that I find is being able to visualize. Visualization is such a powerful, powerful tool to use. Um, athletes use visualization, right? So how many times do you hear about top athletes that spend so much time um, kind of meditating and focusing on running through whatever it is, right? Whether it's, um, I think it was Shaquille O'Neal um, who would actually spend time just focusing on imagining how the game was going to go, taking those shots and always getting the shots. Um, so being able to visualize what you want can be very, very powerful. So being able to visualize the shape and size that you want to be, as well as why. So why is it that you want to be that shape or size? Concentrating on the positive things um, that looking different are going to enable you to do makes such a huge difference. And whether that is being able to play with your grandkids, uh, walk them to school, pick them up from school, complete a life challenge. Maybe you've um, always wanted to run a marathon, but you haven't been able to because of your weight. Um, or just being able to get to the top of the stairs without being out of breath. And you'd be absolutely amazed how much more likely you are to succeed if you focus on the positives of what you want to achieve rather than the demotivating facts of what you need to do to get there. So I'd like to offer, um, I have a very simple workbook uh, that if you are interested uh, in receiving it, um, it's to help you learn how to visualize better. Um, so if you would like a copy of this simple workbook, you can either comment in the comments below, just say, see myself slim, or you can send me a private message, let me know that you are interested in receiving it, and I will make sure that I send it to you. Uh, and in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day. I will be back tomorrow live again at noon where I will be helping you to identify the, the type of eater that you are. We all have a certain type of eating, uh, so I will be helping you to identify what your eating style is. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, once again, just comment in the comments below if you would like to receive the workbook, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.